it feels like we're saying it every day, but today could be the day Aaron Rodgers announces that he's going to join the Jets. And the Jets make their first move of the offseason. It's a move with Aaron Rodgers in mind. We'll talk about it all today on the Locked On Jets podcast. You are Locked On Jets. Your daily New York Jets podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Welcome, this is the Locked On Jets podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. It's Wednesday, March 15th, 2023, and I'm your host, John B. from gangreennation.com, thanking you for making the show your first listen or first watch every day. This podcast is free and available on all platforms, including YouTube. If you like what you see or hear, hit the subscribe button where you're watching or listening so that you'll never miss an episode. If you're listening on a podcast source, please give the show a five-star review if you enjoy it. If you're watching on YouTube, please give this episode a big thumbs up. These things help the channel out and help other Jets fans find the podcast. I promise you, one of these days in the offseason, we're going to have a podcast where Aaron Rodgers is not the focal point. Unfortunately, though, that day is not today. The NFL league year for 2023 actually begins today. It's, it's New Year's Day in the NFL. Players are officially able to sign with new teams. Teams are able to execute trades because the new league year gets underway. The question is whether this will be the end of the Aaron Rodgers watch, or at least the next, or at least can we move to the next phase of the Aaron Rodgers watch? At the time we have recorded this podcast, Aaron Rodgers has still not made any announcement on what he's going to do. However, you will be seeing Aaron Rodgers today. 1 p.m. Eastern Time on the Pat McAfee Show on YouTube, Rodgers is scheduled to do a guest spot, as he frequently does. He's a regular guest on Pat McAfee's show, so perhaps Rodgers is going to announce that he's coming to the Jets. And at this point, it, it kind of feels like a formality, even though there's a lot of work that has to be done. If you're listening to some of the reports behind the scenes... The Jets and Packers still have some work to do to work out a trade. There are some contractual issues that still need to be hammered out. So it could be a while, you know, it could be days, maybe I hope it's not weeks, before a a trade is officially made. But the Packers have said that they will honor any request Rodgers makes. So Rodgers can announce he's coming to the Jets. At least calm some nerves in New York and get this moving to the next stage of the process. Because at this point... There are numerous reports that suggest he has not informed anybody. The Jets are still making it. The Jets and Packers are still out there guessing what he's going to do. The Jets have proceeded with their offseason plans, but as though Rodgers is coming, but we still don't know officially whether Aaron Rodgers is coming to the Jets. He's not yet made an official announcement. And once he does that, then the Jets and Packers can get to work and finalize any trade that needs to be made, the trade that needs to be made. We're, we're, we're in a holding pattern right now. We've been for multiple days. It's gotten to a point where I think fans are getting impatient, and I think if, quite fairly so. Uh, this is a situation you would have liked to have seen resolved by now. But again, 1 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time, the Pat McAfee Show on YouTube. And unfortunately, some commitments today will keep me from doing an immediate reaction podcast. But if Rodgers does announce he's coming to the Jets, or if Rodgers announces he's not coming to the Jets, which would be a surprise... I will do my best to get a podcast up on Thursday night. You know, I would aim for maybe the 7 o'clock hour, the 8 o'clock hour to get you some thoughts as early as possible on what's happening with Aaron Rodgers. Now, the Jets made their first move of the offseason. They're at least their first imported player from another team. They reached an agreement with Green Bay wide receiver Alan Lazard on a four-year, $44 million contract, $22 million guarantee. We're still waiting for the specific structure to see whether there's void years on that what the cap is each season, but we, we have at least a general idea of what's going on there. Now, this could be a sign that Aaron, this could be yet another sign that Aaron Rodgers is likely to come to the Jets because Rodgers and Lazard were teammates in Green Bay for five years. Rodgers, you know, seems, based on what we've heard, especially yesterday, and we'll get to that in a little bit, it seems like Rodgers wants Lazard in New York. It seems like the two of them are tight now, if you listen to Tuesday's podcast, one of the things I mentioned is that we know Aaron Rodgers is going to have some degree of say over players who come to New York, especially at the wide receiver position. And one of the questions I asked was whether he's going to bring in talented guys who can make a difference or whether he's going to focus on his buddies like Alan Lazard and Randall Cobb. Well, it looks like 
the answer to that is the latter rather than the former. And listen, I am not a big Lazard guy. I will tell you that. Even before I thought it was it was a realistic possibility that Aaron Rodgers was coming to New York, I was pretty vocal that Alan Lazard was not a free agent I was particularly interested in. So the way I view this is like it's like the Aaron Rodgers tax. If you want to get Aaron Rodgers, I think he and Lazard might be a package deal. So it's you know twenty two million dollars guaranteed, eleven million dollars a year for Lazard. I will say this: I, I think. If you're looking beyond, if you're looking to categorize this beyond an Aaron Rodgers tax, I think stylistically he actually fits well with what the Jets have at the receiver position because he's a big bodied guy. In theory, he wins contested catches. I mean, the, the actual track record is a little bit spotty there, but in theory, what, what would you want with Garrett Wilson and Elijah Moore? You know, Wilson's a guy who's a good route runner, an unconventional route runner, but a guy who. I don't know if technician's the right word, because, again, his route running somewhat unconventional, but a guy who runs routes well. More a guy, in theory, who, you know, I'm using this phrase a lot when we're talking about receivers on this team. In theory, he's supposed to be a speedster, a guy with big playability. Didn't show it so much last year, but his rookie year he did. So what would you, what would complement that well? Well, it'd be a big guy, you know, a guy who could go up and win balls in the air. And you know, ultimately, Lazard, likely a replacement for Corey Davis. You would have to think Corey Davis's days are numbered with the New York Jets now. Lazard's almost you know a, a match re- a replacement, you know that that straight out of central casting, so to speak. If we're just talking physical tools, uh, you know Davis is likely gone. He's you know he has it's a pretty easy guy to cut, a pretty easy contract to get out of. I think that they're roughly equal players. I think Davis actually might be a little bit better, but again, you have the Rodgers factor. This is who Aaron Rodgers wants, and especially at the receiver position, I think the Jets are going to be cognizant of that. Again, I'm not a big fan of Lazard. I mean, look, this is a guy who has had Aaron Rodgers throwing to him his whole career, and he's never had an 800-yard season. In fact, he's only had one season where he's broken 600 yards, and that was last year when you know, Devontae Adams had left Green Bay, and there was every opportunity for Lazard to step up, and you know, he had the best season of his career. It wasn't that great. Before that, you know, the previous years of his career, Green Bay really had no no great second option behind Devontae Adams. There was every opportunity for Lazard to step up. Never even got 550 yards uh, this, the first four years of his career. I think it's tough to say that, you know, you're bringing him in. I think one of the, the, one of the disconnects here is, you know, you want receivers who have chemistry with Aaron Rodgers, but, I mean, Lazard hasn't been super productive with Aaron Rodgers. The other thing is, like, there are receivers out there where you could say, you know what, we get Aaron Rodgers, this guy's going to be a lot better. I don't know that really works with Lazard because he's had Aaron Rodgers throwing to him his whole career. So I, I'm not a huge fan of this move. I'll be honest with you. I view it as you know a means to the means to an end. I think it's one of those things that you know they may have, Rodgers may have made it clear to the Jets that they were a package deal that this is a guy that they wanted. I hope it's not a situation where Rodgers. It doesn't sound like Rodgers is still up in the air on this. So I'm not even going to. I'm not going to go there, but. It's almost a, but it's also could be a sign that another sign that Rodgers is on his way to New York because there have been rumors over the last couple of days that Rodgers has been trying to recruit players to the Jets. Somebody's close with with Alan Lazard. It just does not seem like a coincidence that Lazard signs with the Jets. It, the teams don't know yet what Rodgers is doing, or he hasn't officially said it. But Lazard, you know, you would have to think, given the relationship in Green Bay, that Lazard has a pretty good idea of what Aaron Rodgers is doing, and I'm not sure he would have come to New York. If he didn't think Rod, if he didn't know Rodgers was on his way here, Lazard might not be the only former teammate of Aaron Rodgers to be joining the Jets, however, because Rodgers actually put out a list of teammates, or, or he maybe he didn't put it out, but it was released in the media yesterday. A list of teammates, a list of players Rodgers would like the Jets to sign as he joins them. We're going to talk about that. We'll talk about. I'll tell you which players Rodgers wants, and we'll go a little bit more in depth as we continue on this Wednesday episode of the Locked On Jets podcast. Today's episode of Locked On Jets is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook. I would never bet on when this Aaron Rodgers saga is going to end. I think it's really difficult to figure that out. Maybe today we'll get some sort of indication on the Pat McAfee show, 1 o'clock Eastern time on YouTube. But we are approaching the NBA playoffs. The regular season is winding down. And that makes it the perfect time to download FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Because new customers get a no-sweat first bet of up to $1,000. That's bonus bets back if your first bet doesn't win. 
Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Then you can bet on everything from the money line to point scorers and threes drained. Plus, FanDuel even lets you combine your bets for a chance at the bigger payout with a same-game parlay. So don't miss your chance to get a no-sweat first bet of up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. Thank you for making Locked On Jets your first listener, first watch every day. This podcast is free and available on all platforms. It's all Aaron Rodgers all the time this week on Locked On Jets. It's been that way for a while. One of these days, we'll we'll actually have Aaron Rodgers on the Jets. One of these days, we'll be able to talk about something else. That day is not today, though. This could be the day. We've been saying it all week that this could be the day Aaron Rodgers finally makes a decision. But he does have a, a media appearance scheduled at 1 o'clock Eastern time on the Pat McAfee show, so perhaps he will finally provide us with some clarity then. Rodgers remained in the news yesterday, even though he did not make his decision. The Jets signed one of his former teammates with Green Bay, Alan Lazard. Also, a reporter from ESPN, Diana Marie Russini, put out a an interesting piece of information that Rodgers has been in touch with the Jets, apparently, and has given them a list of, I guess they call it suggested players he wants them to sign. Lazard is on that list. Uh... The other players on that list are Randall Cobb, a longtime teammate with Green Bay, Mercedes Lewis, a tight end who spent uh, has been with the Packers the last couple of years, and then Odell Beckham Jr., not a, not a teammate of Aaron Rodgers, but somebody he apparently wants to work with. And you know, it's it's a bit of a bold move to be dictating personnel moves when you're not for a team you're not even on. That might be a first in professional sports history. I, I'd have to look into that. A player who's not on the team. Who's telling the team who to get? But that's the situation we're in right now. It's a very strange time. Uh, you know, if you were, if you were not a Jets fan, you, you'd take a you'd take a step back here and just appreciate what an interesting moment this is. Should the Jets sign these guys? Uh, for me, Beckham is the guy who like interests me the most in, in that crew. And now that Lazard is in the mix at eleven million dollars a year, I'm not sure how realistic that is. I think Beckham. I I don't love the idea of the Jets signing him in a vacuum, but for where the Jets are, if you're going to go Aaron Rodgers, that means you got to go all in. And of the players on that list, Beckham's like the one guy who most recently has made a positive impact for an offense. I mean, the Rams team that won the Super Bowl two years ago, he was a difference maker for them. You know, it may not have been vintage Odell Beckham Jr. from you know the Giants days, but. A guy who really was an important part, of, became an important part of their offense down the stretch after joining them around midseason. He's got that star pedigree. So, and the other thing is, like, I, I worry. I always worried about bringing Beckham into a team with a young quarterback who, you know, maybe he'd show up. I think there's always a little bit of a concern with that dynamic with uh, with on a team like that. But if you have Aaron Rodgers, I mean, he's not going to show Aaron Rodgers up. So. I, there's a lot of risk with Beckham, obviously. I mean, he did not play last year. He suffered a serious injury in the Super Bowl win the Rams had over the Bengals two years ago. So not a lock, but I mean, of the players that are on that list, that includes Lazar. Lazar, that to me is like the, the one that makes the most sense because I think he can add something to the offense that nobody else has. I don't love it, but... This is for this. If the Jets are going to go with Aaron Rodgers, go all in. I think you try and bring in as much impact as possible. How much does Beckham have left in the tank at this point of his career? You know, difficult to say, but that's the one. That's the one that makes sense to me. When we get to Randall Cobb, I have no. I mean, again, this is another Aaron Rodgers tax, and it's not like Lazard, where I feel like you could talk yourself into Lazard. You could say he's got a big body. You can say he's coming off his best season. I mean, there's enough with Alan Lazard. You can at least make a credible case here that this is. A, I don't love it, but if you want to argue that Alan Lazard's a good move, I mean, you, there's enough. There's enough there that you can make a credible argument. Randall Cobb. I mean, this is this is like a straight up Aaron Rodgers tax. I mean, this is just out bringing Aaron Rodgers' friend in. It reminds me a bit of you know LeBron with the Lakers, where he just wants to bring in his friends, whether or not they're a good fit or not. And we know Rodgers, I mean, Rodgers is clearly going to have a lot of sway over the roster. I mean, Rodgers, Rodgers is not even on the team yet, and he's got a lot of sway over the roster. Um, uh, Rodgers, maybe he wants to play with his friends. I guess he, I guess Cobb goes into the Braxton Berrios role. There was a point where I would have really loved to have Randall Cobb on the Jets. You know, a guy who could make plays in space, a guy you could line up into multiple spots. Those days are long gone. Cobb now in his 30s. 
I'm sorry. You know, that's where I try, I gotta draw the line. You know, I can you can talk me into Alan Lazard, Beckham. I can see the logic. You're not gonna talk me into Randall Cobb. You're just Randall Cobb is literally a, a mechanism to get Aaron Rodgers at this point. Essentially, that's if Rodgers. Is, Rodgers, I think, at this point has a lot of leverage over the Jets. The Jets obviously want him badly. Jets are gonna be receptive to what he has to say. And by the way, I mean he's the quarterback of the team. So you are going to listen to his input. I think any time, any time you have the quarter, any quarterback, you're going to at least to some degree listen to his input on the receivers he throws to. Maybe not to the most teams, not to the degree the Jets will with Rodgers. But yeah, Randall Cobb. That's we're going to have to move past that one. That's that's not one you're ever going to be able to talk me into. And then Mercedes Lewis, longtime Jacksonville Jaguar, has spent the last several seasons with the Green Bay Packers. You know, very very old tight ends. Not very productive as a receiver. He had like one big season with Jacksonville. It was like a dozen years ago where he was, he was very prolific as a receiver. Aside from that, he's been, you know, maybe had one or two other decent seasons as a receiver here or there. But the guy is really more of a blocker. I think a lot of people are unexcited about this. I'm also unexcited about this possibility. The only thing is, I look at him, and even at his age, he actually might be better than the tight ends the Jets have because the Jets have such bad tight ends. Lewis at least can still block. I mean, he may not be give, give you much as a, in the passing game, but he can still block. And that's more than you can say about you know, Conklin or Uzama, who, in my opinion, really bring nothing to the table. But that's my rants on tight ends, you know. I'm not a big fan of, if you're new to the show, I'm not a big fan of Jets tight ends. So, while I'm not crazy about the idea of Mercedes Lewis coming, I at least you know, can appreciate that maybe he's an upgrade over Tyler Conklin and C.J. Uzama. Maybe. But that speaks more to what the Jets have in the tight end position. So, Rodgers, I don't know if it's demands. It doesn't sound like it, these are demands, but it sounds like suggestions. Rodgers, before he's even a member of the Jets, having sway over the moves the team makes. Now, head here on the Locked On Jets podcast, we will close out this Wednesday episode. We'll talk about some of the obstacles that remain in a potential deal between the Jets and the Packers. Today's episode of Locked On Jets is brought to you by Ultimate Football GM. Do you think you can do better than the Jets this offseason? Do you think you can land a quarterback better than Aaron Rodgers? Do you think you can do better than Joe Douglas? Then I want to tell you about Ultimate Football GM. You've heard me talk about this mobile game app, and you've, if you've ever thought you'd make a good GM, you got to give the game a try. It's not as easy as you might think to create a dynasty. With Ultimate Football GM, you get to control and manage every strategic aspect of your team as you play through seasons and lead your team to glory trying to build a historic dynasty. With Ultimate Football GM, you're responsible for controlling the destiny of your franchise by hiring the right coaches and coordinators, managing all the finances, including negotiating player salaries and terms, navigating your franchise through free agency, the draft injuries, player personnel issues, and all the ups and downs of a season. All of this in a challenging and realistic game world. Ultimate Football GM is completely free and playable offline. Play on the go as you want to and when you want to. And Locked On Jets listeners get a 100% free boost to their franchise when using promo code Locked On all caps in the game store. Again, that's Locked On in all caps. So make sure to check it out today. To download the game, just visit ultimate-gm.com or look it up in the app stores. Again, that's ultimate-gm.com. Ultimate Football GM. Start your dynasty today. This is the Locked On Jets podcast here on this Wednesday. We're talking Aaron Rodgers. This podcast might as well be called the Locked On Aaron Rodgers podcast this week because our focus has been on the Green Bay Packers superstar quarterback who very well might be traded to the New York Jets sometime in the near future. Now, there have been all sorts of conflicting reports out there, but yesterday a number of reports came out, one from Pro Football Talk. I saw it from a couple other sources that there are actually some hurdles that need to be overcome for the Jets and Packers to reach a deal. And despite the fact that there were reports from a few days ago that, you know, the framework of a trade was largely completed, now it seems like that might not necessarily be the case. And there, there's a lot to work through here. The first is Rodgers' contract. And it, it's kind of a complex deal, so I've, I've tracked down as many details as I can about this. Rodgers has a $60 million team option for the 2023 season. And the first day the team, any you know, whatever team he's on, whether it's the Jets or Packers, can pick up that option is Friday. So that could prevent a deal from being officially filed to the league until Friday at the earliest. But the team, you can announce it at any point. I mean, that's been happening. You you actually cannot announce a trade. A deal cannot a, a trade that's been worked out during the off season 
does not become official today until 4 p.m. Eastern at the earliest, which is when the new league year begins. So you can announce a trade before the paperwork is filed. That said, I mean, there is there are some complications here because Rodgers has that $60 million team bonus, but from my understanding of this, and this is a very complex deal, so I had to like do a lot of research, so I'm only like 95% sure on some of the stuff I'm telling you, but I, I feel reasonably confident. I feel confident enough to, to talk about it. You essentially have the full off season before you decide you want to pick it up. So this could drag out. You know, there's no nece- there's not necessarily any rush. But beyond that, the Jets and Packers need to work out how much of the $60 million Green Bay is going to retain. And of course, the more money the Packers take on, the the bigger the compensation the Jets need to offer to get them. And that the more of the $60 million, you know, the higher amount the Jets are taking on in salary, the lower the compensation should be. And it's kind of this weird game right now because both everybody's got a little bit of leverage at, 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 on the table and pretty much everybody needs th- this deal to work out the Packers have made it clear they don't want Rodgers back I mean they can say whatever they want I mean last week their CEO essentially said that Rodgers is their plan B if everything doesn't work out for them then they're bringing Rodgers back as the starter the Jets really have left themselves without a plan B here I mean there, there's no other op- I mean if you want to go Jacoby Brissett I guess but there's no other option for the Jets in 2023, and that's you know you got a coach and a general manager on the hot seat. They're going to try and make a deal work. For Rodgers, I mean, it sounds like he wants to keep playing, and the only team that wants him is the Jets. So there's every incentive for something to get done here on all sides, and I think it probably will because I just think there's it just logically makes sense. There's too much going on right now. There's there's too much. All three parties have an incentive to get this done. So I can't imagine it not getting done, but the parameters need to be worked out. The Jets and Packers need to figure out what they're trading, what the Jets are trading Green Bay. The Jets and Packers need to figure out how much of the $60 million the Jets are picking up, and that deals with the compensation. And amazingly, we're at this point. It doesn't sound like everything is completed at the moment. So we'll, we'll see what happens. And, of course, things can come, can, things can come together, to, together quite quickly if Rodgers finally announces today that he's coming to the Jets. Mike Florio of Pro Football Talk speculated that the Packers would be willing to play this out until the draft. I'm skeptical that that sounds like a story that the Packers have put out there to try and up their leverage. It's really difficult to imagine that the Packers would want to drag this distraction on as long as possible, but who knows? I mean, things have changed so much. I mean, there was talk earlier in the offseason that the deal would have to wait till June. That doesn't seem to be the case anymore. We'll have to wait and see, but it sounds like, you know, we're, we still have some hurdles to get over. I, it's tough to imagine this deal not getting done right now, though. It's, you know, anything's possible, but at this point in time, it certainly looks like all the momentum is on the side of Aaron Rodgers eventually becoming a member of the New York Jets, whether it's today, whether it's tomorrow, whether it's next week, hopefully not longer than that. So we'll have to sit, we'll have to wait and see. But that's all for today's episode. This has been the Locked On Jets podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day is our motto. As always, if you enjoy the show, hit the subscribe button where you're watching or listening so that you'll never miss an episode. If you enjoy the show and are listening on podcast source, please give the show a five-star review. If you're watching on YouTube, please give a big thumbs up. These things help the channel out and help other Jets fans find Locked On Jets. Have a great Wednesday, everybody. We'll be back tomorrow to talk more Jets. Maybe we'll talk about Aaron Rodgers again. <laughs>